I always get asked, why don't I use aluminum cookware? In this video, I'll give you my personal reasons and experience regarding aluminum and leaching. I'll also discuss which metal cookware I think you should be using and the change in restaurant culture. Let's dive in. Okay, so let me start off by saying that no one can deny the thermal properties of aluminum and the abundancy of aluminum, which translates to low cost. Aluminum reacts very quickly to temperature change, and it has a lot of thermal properties that give it a lot of pros. But there's also several cons. I mainly stick to the big three, cast iron, carbon steel, and stainless steel. So let's talk about the restaurant industry and aluminum. Aluminum was very popular in the 80s to about the early 90s, and then there was a big shift in culture. Restaurants started to kind of move away from aluminum cookware, and they started really adopting stainless steel, which was gaining popularity. We found out that aluminum was actually pretty toxic to the human body, and that aluminum cookware had a potential to leach into the food, especially when aluminum was used daily or with acidity, acidic foods. Clad stainless steel was being manufactured and was being manufactured at a lower and lower price, and it started gaining popularity. If you're not familiar with clad stainless steel, it's basically taking several layers and combining them into one pan. So the most popular clad stainless steel pans are actually three ply, where there's aluminum in the middle and it's wrapped with stainless steel on the outsides. The stainless steel actually offered a protective layer to the aluminum and combined the two made magic. It was basically the best of both worlds and restaurants loved clad stainless steel. So the race to replace aluminum with stainless steel had begun. Now, not every single restaurant went out there and got rid of their aluminum pans and cookware. There's still some restaurants today that still use aluminum and primarily they're fast food restaurants, but you'll still find them at, you know, five star Michelin star restaurants all over the world. So why is that? Because there's a big shift between the industry. A lot of people recognize that aluminum was toxic and they switched it out. Others still find aluminum extremely beneficial and most importantly, really cost beneficial. But I would say the majority of restaurants out there have seen little benefits to aluminum besides the cost. Now, just like with anything out there, quality really matters. There's some high-end aluminum pots and pans and skillets out there that will actually claim to reduce the leaching effects of aluminum by either providing coatings or other means in the manufacturing process. But the big problem with these manufacturers are their pans are much more expensive. And that does kind of take away from the basic attraction to aluminum cookware, which is the cost savings. At that price point, you're better off just getting a stainless steel pan. So long story short, they're really pricey, which kind of goes against the main selling point of aluminum, which is the cost savings and the low price point. So now let's talk about leaching. Every single pan out there leaches to some degree. Carbon steel, cast iron, stainless steel, they all leach. And of course, the better the quality, the less the pan will leach and degrade and leach more over time. The main difference to consider is when iron leaches, it's not generally too harmful to the human body, or it leaches at such low numbers that it's pretty much insignificant. Now, aluminum leaching, especially on a daily basis and with the introduction of acidity, acidic foods, can actually be quite a lot for the human body in one single meal. Studies have shown that the amount of leaching aluminum cookware can produce on the human body can be two or even three times more than the maximum daily limit, which is pretty surprising. When you do use aluminum cookware on a daily basis or even introducing something like acidity, acidic foods, can cause leaching to really drastically increase. You might even be surprised to find out that leaching can even happen with aluminum foil. Now, covering your food with aluminum foil won't really produce much leaching. It's when you use aluminum foil to cook. For example, let's say you're going to be cooking some salmon. You place that salmon along with some lemon slices or lime slices in aluminum, and then you throw that in the barbecue and you cook it with the aluminum foil. That aluminum foil is actually leaching quite a bit into the salmon, into your food, without you really knowing it. And that alone can actually exceed 
the daily maximum amount for a human body. Like I said, everything leaches, and some studies have also suggested that even stainless steel can leach chromium and nickel, which is harmful to the human body. And again, specifically, stainless steel will leach when you introduce acidity, acidic foods. Now, another thing to consider is the quality of stainless steel greatly reduces leaching. So when you buy something like 810, 88, you're getting good quality, and that in itself will protect you from leaching, at least with stainless steel. And of course, the higher the quality, the less significant the leaching is. So ultimately, you wanna to try to buy the best quality that you can get. Now remember, everything leaches. So one of the ways that manufacturers will cut cost is they will manufacture their stainless steel products with leaching in mind. And the part that's in direct contact with your food, the inside of the pan, will be of higher quality, higher stainless steel quality. And the part that's in direct contact with the heat source, the flames, or whatever, the outside, will be of lower quality. And the theory is the part that's in direct contact with your food, if it does leach, it's of higher quality. And if it does leach at all, it will be very insignificant based on recent studies. Now, obviously there's manufacturers out there that have great products and all around they're using high quality stainless steel. So let's talk about some of the pros to aluminum. The first major pro is it's very, very cheap, very inexpensive. You can buy aluminum all over the place. It's very abundant and it's found in common stores, common mom and pop shops, or even super expensive restaurant depots. The next biggest pro to aluminum is it's really lightweight. So if you're a person that's looking for a light pan, aluminum would be a great option if all other things considered is okay with you. One of the biggest pros to aluminum is it's extremely responsive to temperature change and it's incredibly conductive. And that really is a chef's dream. So now let's talk about the cons to aluminum cookware. Usually aluminum cookware is very thin and prone to warping. And that's something that you really do have to be very careful with. The thicker the aluminum, the more expensive it is. So it's always a cost benefit ratio. The next biggest con to aluminum cookware is it's not induction ready. It doesn't work with induction stovetops unless you add in an induction plate. A big con to aluminum cookware in general is it reacts with acidic foods and it tends to discolor. So if you don't like that, if you're gonna be using a lot of acidic foods, making a lot of acidic dishes, your aluminum pans will discolor and they will react heavily. And that kind of translates to the next con, which is you tend to get a really metallic taste with aluminum when you do make acidic dishes or in general when it does react and leach. So a lot of people do complain about an aluminum or a metallic taste when they do cook with aluminum cookware. And likewise, if your aluminum cookware has some sort of coating to help with leaching or prevent leaching, that does tend to flake off over time and ends up in your food, which can be really unnerving. And in general, aluminum cookware does tend to discolor, like I said, and it's hard to clean. So if you like your pots and pans to be clean all the time or look their best, you may find that aluminum cookware is actually pretty hard to clean, especially when it first discolors. It's because of that general reaction to acidic foods that makes it really difficult to work with. So if you're doing a lot of acidic foods, it's kind of like a domino effect. Now a big con to aluminum pans, and this is in regards to leaching, as they age, they tend to leach more and they tend to absorb more of whatever you are putting into them. And I'll get to that in just a sec. So that actually brings me to my next topic, which is antique aluminum cookware. Antique aluminum cookware can be disgusting. See, the pores of aluminum cookware may have absorbed over the years things that you do not want to eat. For example, motor oil or other chemicals. Now you might be asking, hey, I bought this to cook with. Why would anybody be putting motor oil in their pots and pans? Well, it's because aluminum was so cheap, back in the day you could find it anywhere and people were buying it for all kinds of reasons. For example, a lot of people would buy big pots and pans and use them to change the oil in their car. So in other words, antique aluminum cookware may have been used for things unrelated to cooking. You'll actually find a lot of videos on YouTube where people have tested antique aluminum cookware and have found that the pores have actually absorbed some really nasty things over the years. So here's my final thoughts. Like I've said before, I actually do not own any aluminum cookware. I've used them in the past. They perform fine. I really do think my clad stainless steel cookware takes care of all of the benefits that aluminum has to offer without exposing my family and loved ones to unnecessary risk. 
Actually, to be honest, my copper core stainless steel cookware, I absolutely love that. It's my Kirkland copper core set. And that actually offers all of the benefits that aluminum and copper potentially has with a stainless steel, you know, five ply or multi ply cooking set. In the restaurant industry, in the cooking world, aluminum and copper have really, really great benefits, but people avoid them because of leaching. So me personally, I think a copper core pan, if you really want those benefits of aluminum copper, has everything that you would possibly want with the added safety benefit of stainless steel. So if you're really stuck on aluminum and you like the cooking benefits of aluminum, I think you would really benefit from a three-ply stainless steel skillet or a five-ply stainless steel skillet with aluminum plies in the middle and stainless steel on top. And I feel like that gives you everything that you need. The fast responsiveness of aluminum, the induction ready of stainless steel, and so forth. And if you're a copper fan, then get a five-ply copper core set, and that's gonna give you aluminum, copper, and stainless steel. So to conclude, I think you're better off sticking to the big three, cast iron, carbon steel, and stainless steel. And that should take care of all of your cooking needs. That's it for me, guys. I hope you found this video informative. Check out some of my other videos and I will catch you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Hey, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed that video. Please support the channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing with your family and friends. Follow us on social media and check out our new merchandise store. And above all, thank you for supporting this channel and thank you for watching.